All right, first story, Bully Ray. He's a podcaster. We have so much in common. <laughs> Bully Ray says that Eddie Kingston should be pushed to the moon. Uh, Sid, what's your thoughts and what's Bully's exact quote? Well, Bully's exact quote is like fucking 40 sentences. So we'll, we'll not do the full quote. But basically, he said he was going to do a Dear Tony tweet, but decided instead he would do it on its on a in an interview um, about the Forbidden Door. But basically, he pointed out that Eddie is his most credible guy, that he doesn't care about Eddie's looks, how he walks, etc., 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 because he's real, he's as real as it gets. If the Danielsons of the world and the Omegas of the world are your pro wrestlers, and if the Jerichos of the world and the OCs of the world and the Darbys of the world are your sports entertainments because they have gimmicks, Eddie's your credible guy. Eddie's your Dusty and your Terry Funk. Ooh. Eddie is the guy that when he talks, you believe in more than anything else. Eddie's the guy that comes across as middle-aged and crazy. There's nothing that Eddie has done since he has come to AEW that I don't believe in. And then he goes on about how great Eddie is and that he genuinely doesn't like Claudio and all that stuff. <laughs> Poor Claudio. How, what do you think is the jerk? Well, here's the thing. What if Claudio just one day there was two Twinkies and they were driving to ROH together or, you know, an indie show together, you know, and they're like good friends and they're on the road and there's two Twinkies and Claudio ate them both and Eddie Kingston has been this angry for this long. Has Eddie Kingston, outside of his hatred, has he said anything that Cesaro did to him? He's like, he doesn't respect me. This might all be in your head. This reminds me of a DuckTales. He's Launchpad McDuck. Launchpad McDuck, there's an episode where Launchpad McDuck thinks no one respects him, but he keeps cutting him off. So maybe Claudio's like, you're really, really a piece of shit, huh, Claudio? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I actually don't remember why. It's been a long time but i don't remember why i remember there was a story kayfabe wise like they had a feud back in the day before claudio became cesaro um i i don't know what it was about though got it well either way no matter what it is twinkie or mick uh <laughs> mcduck <laughs> launch pad if it's a twinkie or a launch pad or something serious it's pure entertainment um, I usually don't always, well, it's funny in real life, Bully Ray is such a great guy on the podcast, eh. but I usually don't agree with Bully Ray, but I kind of agree with, he, with him here. Um, I want to see what he could do in a G1, a G1 for those that don't know. Um, I'm trying to be more educational because I see other, like, I'm always like thinking that the audience knows about New Japan, Noah and all that. And then I realized they don't when they were like, who the hell's Kojima? I was like, What? What? <laughs> but the G the big dropper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the G one is a bash show. It's a round robin tournament, and it's they take it very seriously. And on top of it, take it very seriously. It is a toll on your body, and it is very difficult to do. Um, you know, a lot of people cannot handle that high of professional re wrestling at that level that many days in a row. It is a grind. So I want to see what he could do in a G1. I'm kind of excited for that. And I also I agree with Bully. But I also think Tony fucked up from day one. Eddie Kingston can cut promos. Believable promos. But Eddie Kingston, hold on. Just to interject real quick. Hey, go ahead, sir. Eddie Kingston in two minutes made us okay with that horrible dynamite explosion thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, Two minutes in, he, get, he got us to forget about it and think it was great. So he, he is the king of cutting promos. He he, he does make it seem real. Uh, I agree with everything there. Um, this is more on Tony. No matter how great someone is at making something look real, no matter how great someone is at cutting promos, you can turn into Dolph Ziggler pretty fucking quick if you never win. And that's yeah. not on Eddie. That's on Tony. Because it got to a point. I don't know about you. I, I like Eddie Kingston. I'm a fan. It got to a point where he would just lose every fucking match that I would literally fast forward his great promos. Because it's wasted. 
If he's going to give you a Rocky Balboa speech, if he's going to give you a Attack on Titan moment, if he's going to give you a speech that you'll remember forever and then loses to fucking Jungle Boy with his arm tied behind his back, what the fuck is the point of life? So, it's not very often we agree with Bully Ray. It's not. Usually we're like, Bully Ray, you're old. Blah. But no, I think Bully Ray has a point. I think Bully Ray has a point. Tony, what the fuck? Tony is Susan 2.0. <laughs> also, I uh, I looked into it real quick. The consensus seems to be that it's just Eddie staying with Keith K. Vabe and having fun because he and Claudio were in a feud when Claudio got signed by WWE and they never finished it. Ah, oh, that's cool. That's cool. So uh, he's just, the feud hasn't ended for him ever. Yeah. And all that, but he's just so good at cutting promos and believable and that's it, you know, and compared him to Terry Funk and Dusty, the difference is Terry Funk and Dusty won. If you take Dusty Rhodes, and I love Dusty Rhodes, I would never have made it in professional wrestling without Dusty having my back. So I love Dusty Rhodes. I, he's one of the guys, I have a list of guys that I'll tell you I can't talk bad about just because they're too close to me. Dusty Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, The Nasty Boys, Bam Bam Bigelow, uh, Gangrel, the ACW roster. I'm just like, hey, no, too close, too close to the fire. You know what I mean? Oh, I, Kane Wrestling does that to a guy. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love Dusty Rhodes. If he lost every match, those promos wouldn't mean anything. The hard times. Reach out your hands. One of the great... That is the greatest promo of all time. I know we're celebrating the pipe bomb. The greatest promo of all time is hard times. Because the thing is, a lot of people remember the hard time moment. But when he fucking pulls out the hands, and he's like, your hand, reach out and touch the TV screen. Your hand is in my head. Oh, dude, that shit was off the chart. But imagine if he just fucking lost every match. He would be wasted. Terry Funk, amazing at cutting promos. If he lost every match, he'd be wasted. And WWE, for fans that, you know, only watch WWE, it's Dolph Ziggler. No one in their heart takes Dolph Ziggler seriously. And that's what he is. Go ahead, sir. No, I was just thinking about the fact that I, I was trying to think of a promo that I like more than Hard Times. I think the only one that comes close for me is... uh. The cream always rises to the top. Oh, that's such a good one, too. <laughs> did you, and it, this, this is a little off topic, but did you ever see the, um, did you ever see that the guy who made Macho Man and that quote on his whole wall, like his wife let him paint the wall according to the meme and it was just Macho Man holding it. He's like, the cream always rises to the top, but it's a whole wall. That guy's awesome. No, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so Eddie Kingston hitting hard times, and what a weird, what a weird way to start off the show. We grew up Bully Ray. Salute. I love you, Bully Ray. But Jesus, sometimes your takes a little bit off. But hey, I'm sure he, I'm sure Bully Ray is sitting now watching Wrestle A.M. going, I wonder what Coco and Raccoon's take is. <laughs> yeah, he probably is like, well, your takes are a little off too. You shut up a bitch. Uh, the, my my full favorite Bully Ray story of all time is, uh. Well, I got, I got a lot of them, but this is one of my favorites. There was a New York tough guy, you know, radio personality. And he's like, fucking Impact sucks. I love WWE. He, like, that was his gimmick. I mean, I literally I could be describing any podcaster. Um, and it was like pro WWE New York guy attitude. And Bully Ray offered to fight him at pay-per-view. And the guy backed down. Bully Ray can right. kick my ass. I, I, I haven't seen Sid Light in, in IRL. Um, I don't know how tall the raccoon is. I don't know how tough the raccoon is. I know he start, served army infantry, so I'm sure he's thrown fist before. But I would put, probably Bully Ray could kick both of our asses. Uh, is that safe to say? It's safe to say? I can take Bully Ray. You can take Bully Ray? Oh, the raccoon could take him. I think yeah. I'm so... I'm fighting him in a room without tables, though. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Good strategy, good strategy. Without uh, that, no, he's got me. I, I've done martial arts. I've been a hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor, Marine Corps infantry, but I'm fat, out of shape, loser. I think Bully Ray can kick my ass. Uh, you know, I. but there's no fucking way if he says, come on down to pay-per-view and fight, that I back down. Because here's the thing. Let's say I say Bully Ray sucks and Bully Ray kicks my ass. 
all I have to do is press the go live, st start recording whatever, and say, I'm still standing DDP style, and our channel blows up. There's no fucking way Bully Ray challenges me to a fight. I'm not winning, but if, like, if he's like, oh, let's go to a fight in front of fucking nobody, I'm like, I'm cool, Bully Ray. I have fun Poor doing Bully that. Ray. But, complimented Eddie Kingston and now has you thrown out scenarios where you would fight Bully I'm just Ray. saying it's what I can't believe no All one he would did was complicate Eddie Kingston or complimented Eddie Kingston. He did, but it's still my favorite Bully Ray story because why would you say no? If, if Bully Ray right now, does he still, yeah, he works for Impact. If he said on the next Impact Wrestling show, uh, next Impact main event, pay TV, pay per view, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. I say yes every fucking time. Every fucking time I say yes. Because it would be so fun and entertaining. I would lose. But you just have to fucking not die. And you win. I feel... Dude, is Bully Ray my Apollo? Is Bully Ray my Apollo? I'll be laying it down in Bear. Bear and Bear. Be like, Bear, all I have to do is not die. <laughs> Devon comes up. and be like, do you believe in the American dream? Bully Ray does. Sid, hit the music. Hit the music. I'm right now, it. Boom Boom was in the uh, video description looking for the next chapter. Like... <laughs> next chapter. All right. Boom Boom, this one's for you. 